Hello friends, my name is Jess. Welcome to Books Past Bedtime. So today I am bringing you my May wrap up. Now in May I ended up finishing 17 books so it was a really good reading month for me. Since I have 17 books I'm just gonna wrap up everything really quick especially if I've already talked about these books in another video. Let's jump into it. In the month of May I started out with making my reading Chandler's favorite books video. It was so much fun and I was so happy because Chandler actually watched it. I was kind of a little starstruck and very excited. But anyway I read five books for this video. I will leave the video link in the cards so you can follow along with my reading process reading these five books and what I was thinking about them along the way if you want more info. The first book I read for this video was Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. This book I ended up giving three stars. I did enjoy it but I had some problems with it. So basically it's a romance where these two characters have been pen pals for a really long time and then finally they meet and the guy knows who she is but she doesn't know who he is. It's kind of like this imbalance of power and this misunderstanding going on. He ends up coming to her high school for a while and he still knows who she is but she doesn't know who he is. She has painted this picture of herself in these letters that is totally different from how she is in person and he doesn't like that so he's really mean to her. I didn't really like his like alpha male controllingness. I thought it was weird. I thought some of the sex scenes were kind of weird. It was kind of like a little bit dubious consent stuff going on that I wasn't a fan of but I did enjoy it. I did like the characters for the most part so this was just an average read for me. The next book I read for this video was Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. This is the first book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. This is a long-running vampire romance series. The main premise of this is that there's this like gang of mafia vampires that kind of like fight the enemies of vampires because there's people like trying to take them out and also people like trying to fight humans. I don't know there's a lot of bad guys going on but the main character is like the head of this mafia vampire brotherhood gang thing. He meets this girl they feel an instant animal visceral attraction to one another so that was kind of weird. I really liked learning about the vampires in this world and I really liked the mafia stuff and like them fighting the evil and the villains and all that stuff but I didn't really love the romance aspect just because I didn't really understand why they liked each other other than like this visceral lust but then they were like getting married and were like in love with each other so I was like is this more than physical attraction? You haven't shown me that it is, so I don't really buy it. So that was my big problem with this book and why it was just average for me. I can't decide if I want to continue on in the series. I have heard that there's a male-male romance later on in the series, which does interest me, and I really liked Z, one of the vampire characters. He was really interesting. I would like to read more about him, so I might look into it and see what the other books follow and decide if I want to continue. The third book I read for this video was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is the first book in the Folk of the Air trilogy, and it is a fairy trilogy. It follows this girl named Jude, who is a human living in fairy. Because she is human, she's seen it's a lot weaker than a lot of her peers, looked down upon for this, but all she really wants to do is belong, and so she's really trying to find her place in fairy, trying to become as close to one of them as she can. And there's also a lot of political intrigue in this book because the king is stepping down and replacing himself with one of his sons, and Jude kind of gets herself involved in this. And honestly, the first half of this book was really boring for me. I was not a huge fan, but the ending really picked up, it was really exciting, big plot twist at the end, and now I cannot wait to read the next book. So this got four stars for me. I really enjoyed it. The fourth book I read for this video was probably my least favorite of the month and that was The Guy on the Right by Kate Stewart. This story follows this guy who has never really had a real relationship. He's always struggled connecting to girls. He is not like the other guys. He is the nice guy and nice guys always finish last, you know whatever. So he meets this girl and they like really like each other. They're friends for a while but then they start dating. And then there's this like really big annoying misunderstanding at the end where the guy thinks that his girlfriend is cheating on him with his roommate and his roommate's like this player who is terrible to girls. It was very tiring. The miscommunication at the end was absolutely terrible and it made me hate the love interest. So I was like girl leave him. He's not worth it. With a romance you want them to want to get back together and I did not. So I did not enjoy this. I gave this two stars. It had a few redeeming qualities but overall I was not fan. And then fifth, I read Rock by Anyata Sunday, and this was my first five-star read of the month. I absolutely loved this book. It was so sweet and so cute. This follows the story of these two characters whose families become connected when they are pretty young as their parents get together. They're not related, but they do eventually become stepbrothers. They instantly form a bond and a connection. We watch their relationship grow throughout 10 to 12 years, really watch them grow up and grow together and grow apart, and there's so much angst and so much pining, but there's also a lot of fluff and a good amount of smut. Honestly, the perfect equation for a book like this. It was great. I really enjoyed it. This book won't be for everyone. I definitely would look up trigger warnings. There is like a little bit of like questionable like incest kind of stuff going on. You know, it's not but it, it... <laughs> read some reviews. Don't come for me if you read this and you're like the <laughs> Okay, cool. 
We good? Cool. So then my next project for the month was rereading the entire Hunger Games series in anticipation of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which is the new prequel to the Hunger Games. Did this in a 24 hour readathon. I will link that in the cards above if you are interested. So obviously the first book I finished in this project was The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. This was my first time rereading these books since high school and honestly I had a ton of fun. If you don't know what this series is about somehow, it basically takes place in this dystopian North America where there is this capital in these 12 outlying districts and every year in order to remind the districts how terrible war is and why they shouldn't rebel again, they have these annual Hunger Games where they take a boy and a girl tribute from each district and make them fight to the death in the capital. And it as terrible as it sounds. But this series is so interesting, so exciting, so unique. The characters are great. The first book in the series I gave four stars. I think this is the best pace of the three. It is exciting the whole way through and it keeps you interested the whole way through. But and I think they're supposed to be cringy in a way, but the interactions, especially between Katniss and Peeta, really got on my nerves throughout this story. They were just so unnatural and so painful to read about that I was not having a good time. <laughs> I also gave the second book in the series Catching Fire four stars. While a lot of the character interactions got better and felt more natural in this one, the pacing is terrible. The whole point of the second book is the Quarter Quell, which is the 75th annual Hunger Games. Every 25 years, it's like something special, something different. The games like took 60 pages and were over, and it was like at the end. They should have been at least 50% of the book, especially because the concept was so interesting and the tributes are so interesting, the extra ones that they throw in. And like the whole book leading up to the Quarter Quell was just kind of boring and just set up and it definitely could have been condensed and I think the games could have been expanded and I would have enjoyed it a lot more. The third book Mockingjay I also gave four stars to and for the same reason as Catching Fire this is really poorly paced. The beginning is so boring and then once they finally get to the capital and are like fighting the war it is so fast. Although I did really appreciate in this book more so than when I was younger how Suzanne Collins really took a deep dive into the mental health of these characters and how they would have been affected by these games. I think she did a good job portraying that in a realistic way. That's why I like the ending because at that point nothing really matters to them anymore they just want to live quietly in peace Katniss doesn't want to fight this huge rebellion she doesn't care what happens to district 13 or the capital as a whole she just wants to live in peace and I think that's beautiful that she got that in the end now onto the beast the ballad of songbirds and snakes I do have an official review for this up and I will link that up here maybe it's up here I I don't know why don't I know? Anyway, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I gave it two stars. I was not a fan. Like her previous books, I thought this was very poorly paced. I thought that the development of Coriolana Snow took so much of a front seat and was good. Like we really came to understand him as a character, even if we didn't agree with his actions. But that development came at the detriment of everything else in the story. So none of the other side characters were fully developed. They were all caricatures. They had like one main trait and that trait drove their actions throughout the whole story. And the pacing was just poor. It definitely could have been 200 pages shorter. I didn't really feel like it had a very good focus. There was like a beginning, a middle, and an end, but there wasn't a build up to a climax to a falling action. It didn't really work like that for me. Also, the ending was really fast and very confusing. I have no an idea what happened. So overall, was disappointed with this book. I shouldn't have read it. I didn't really want to read it. I don't like books that are published after a series is completed, but I wanted to make a video for you guys and I did. So yeah. And next I read three books for a secret TBR video that will be coming in a week or yeah, a week, I think. A week or two? Two weeks. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Not you, not me. Nobody knows. It's very secret. So the first book I read for this series was Always Never Yours by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. This is a YA contemporary romance and it follows this girl who it seems always dates a boy right before he finds the love of his life but she never gets to find the love of her life and so she's kind of jaded about relationships but she always wants to be in a relationship at the same time. And throughout this book we see her go after this one boy but then realize that maybe this other boy is better for her. There's quite a lot of cheating in this book which is fun but yeah I can't really tell you what I thought about it because that's the point of the secret TBR so I just read it and that's all you need to know another book that I just read and you don't need to know a lot about is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne this is an enemies to lovers adult romance it follows these two characters who are co-workers and they really just hate each other and they play all these games to each other eventually they stop playing those games and realize that they are in love with each other How, what did I think of it who knows find out later the last book I read for The Secret Project is The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. This is an adult thriller following this unreliable narrator who's kind of an alcoholic and she rides this train every day to work even though she doesn't have a job and she looks out her window and makes up the story about this couple who she sees on her way to work every day. Work. 
um, eventually that woman who she spies on goes missing. Um, she was also in the area at the time because her ex lives right next door to this woman or right down the street from this woman. So she kind of gets tangled up in the mystery and wants to figure out where this woman went and what happened. And she's got some weird memories of that night and wants to figure them out. What did I think of it? Who knows? You'll have to wait and see. And now I've got some random books that I read just for the heck of it in May. So the first of those is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. And I'm doing a full series reread with Kirsten over at Kirsten's Corner in anticipation of the release of Midnight Sun in August. I did film a reading vlog reading this book. Look out for that. If somehow you didn't know what this one is about either, this follows Bella, who is this normal girl who moves to Forks, Washington, and she meets Edward, who turns out to be a vampire, and they fall in love. I am trash for this book. I love it so much. I gave it five stars. Watch my reading vlog if you want to hear discussions on why. I think it's deserving of five stars and not one star like all you haters out there. I also read Bunny by Mona Awad. This was a really interesting book. It follows this girl named Samantha who gets tangled up in this cult of girls who call each other Bunny. There is some weird magical elements in here where they take bunnies and turn them into men. This is, book is also really weird because it reminds me of Black Swan because the whole time you're reading this you have no idea what's real. You have no idea if the character has schizophrenia and she's imagining things. You don't know if it's a drug-induced fever dream. You don't know if this is her own thesis because she's currently in a master's program for creative writing throughout the book is working on her thesis. You don't really know what the deal is with this book and that's what made it so great. I read this with Rain over at Bruce and Vines for her bunny read-along and it was really interesting listening to all of the girls discuss this book. It really helped me solidify my writing and realize that this does have a lot of compelling aspects to it and it was really well thought out. Just really interesting. It was totally unique unlike anything I've ever read before. I gave it four stars. This month I also read The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. This is an adult thriller slash paranormal kind of novel and it is really interesting because it mixes these elements of true crime and paranormal. So you are guessing the whole time and you don't really know where the evil is coming from, if it's coming from the ghosts in the motel or if it's coming from the serial killer that's on the loose. And this book takes place in two different timelines. It follows this woman named Viv in the 80s and this girl named Carly in the present day. And Carly is actually Viv's niece. When Viv was working at this motel she disappeared. Carly has come to this town to try and figure out what happened to her and so she is there trying to solve the mystery and we alternate between timelines trying to figure out what's going on and honestly I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was very compelling and very interesting. I gave it four stars. This was our pick for the Page Turner book club this month and we did a live show over on Katie's channel and that is posted now if you want to go check it out. And then for June we will be reading Beach Read by Emily Henry if you would like to join us. I will leave all the information for the book club down in the description down below and we would love if you wanted to participate. We had so much fun and I think it would be fun if you wanted to join too. This month I also listened to Be Not Far From Me by Minnie McGinnis on audio. This is a survival story about a girl that gets lost in the woods. She becomes injured. All of her friends don't realize that she has lost in the woods and they leave her behind so she has to survive and try to find her way out. This is a very difficult story to read but it was so interesting and so well written. I really came to love the characters and really want to root for her and it just was an amazing story of survival and perseverance. It was just really compelling. I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed it. And finally, the last thing I finished just yesterday was Fence Volume 1 by C.S. McCott. This is a graphic novel following Nicholas who gets a scholarship to a fancy boarding school and but in order to keep that scholarship he has to make the fencing team and he does have some experience fencing but it's not very professional experience. He doesn't have very good technique so making the team is going to be kind of a challenge especially because his roommate is this awful guy who he hates who is unbeatable. I think eventually this is going to become an enemies to lovers male male romance which is why I picked it up. Do you know me at all? This was a lot of fun. I gave it four stars. There was just a lot of exposition so there wasn't really a lot to give more stars to because nothing really happened but I'm very excited to pick up the next couple. This is being read for the Queer Lit Readathon which started yesterday May 31st. I also thought I would just mention a couple of the books that I'm currently reading that I started back in May. So the first of these is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. I really wanted to finish this this month but I just did not. <laughs> have about 300 pages left. Hopefully I'll finish it in June. I'm not really sure where in my schedule I'm going to put it, but I'm gonna try my hardest. And then I also started reading the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I'm probably about a third of the way into this. I started reading this for Hannah over at Adventuring Foodies Harry Potter Read Along. This month she's doing the Chamber of Secrets, so I will be reading that one this month along with finishing up this one. And it's so fun reading the illustrated editions. I haven't read these yet before, and it's just such a new fun experience and I'm really, really enjoying it. And then another book for that secret TBR that 
one I mentioned was The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutowski. Marie Rutowski is the writer of the Winners Trilogy and this is set in the same world but in a different country in that world and so this follows a character named Niram. She is of a class called Midkith. There are three main classes in this world, Midkith, Midlings, and Highkith. And Midkiths are the lowest of the low. They don't have a lot of capabilities to move around the city. They don't have a lot of information about what's going on. And Niram meets this girl from a another country. She didn't even know there are other countries out there and she's just very intrigued by her. I believe there is a female female romance in this. I'm about halfway through at this point really enjoying it, really loving it, and plan to finish it in June. So that was my May reading wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a really good reading month and was very excited to share all of these great books with you. I didn't have a single one star this month which is very exciting. I feel like I always have a one star. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. All relevant links including all the channels I mentioned and all the books I mentioned will be in the description down below so definitely go and check that out if you're interested. Also let me know how your reading month went in May. I would love to know if you read any great books and that'll be all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Elvis! <laughs> Bye.